I have had the chance to ask owners what their thoughts were about the mask. Many of them cannot afford to lose any more customers. They are already they are already on the verge of shutting their doors forever. This is something that Palmer cannot afford to lose. One of the many charms of Palmer is the many choices of stores. I know the owner of Misfit Consignments makes several arrangements to accommodate the variety of shoppers. The owner of Ron's Essentials was allow people to FaceTime with her so she could walk her phone around the store and they could virtually shop. The owners of Fireside put Fireside Books put up a curbside pickup area outside their store for customers that did not want to or could not come inside. And the owner of Kombucha 203 had homemade masks available for, for use. Well, they have made a cons cons conscious decision to adapt to the current situation. This is not a long term solution. This is also not something that the government can fix. The box stores are already doing what is best for them by requiring masks. The small business owners should be able to make up their own minds as to what requirements they are asking us customers to comply with. By passing this ordinance, we will be wasting tax do taxpayer dollars, everyone's time, and the spirit of Palmer. If this idea were brought forth to the deputy mayor by a business owner, they should be proud that we live in a great country where they are allowed to own their, their businesses without government rule. They should be thankful that no one is controlling how the businesses are being run. They should also be thankful that if they want to require masks in their own businesses, that they have the freedom to do so. Thank you for your time and hope that Palmer makes the best decision for Palmer because after all, that is why we all love Palmer so much. Tony Shanks. We need that for sure, you. environments that we walked around and were sterile, 
and then maybe when it touches this would work. Most people do not wear the mask correctly in the first place, making them more susceptible to the virus. And then with beards that stick out below the mask make it very ineffective. You cannot mandate men to shave, so that makes so that makes mask wool sufficiently work. Mask wearers that have them fall below the noses make it pointless. Touch new masks constantly makes it pointless. Trust the community you live in to be diligent. If you are asking business owners to potentially turn away customers that do not agree with the mandate, which cannot come into my salon and use TMs, they bought and paid for unless they have a mask on. Customers that do not agree with the mandate will take the business elsewhere. We do not have the luxury of curbside tanning. I am not dictating to my customers what they can and cannot do. That is their choice. As an elected official, it is your job to listen to both sides of this dispute. Whatever majority of people want and how to best represent them, trusting that the community will be diligent during this time, in my opinion, is the best way to gain respect in your position. I urge you, Supreme Comes, to allow the people of this community to trust me and feel secure in the decisions you made on behalf of them by not forcing anyone in this mandate respectfully to push shields. Just in short, I drive school bus for the MSBSD. I see everyone wearing masks everywhere they go. Today I walked into a school that I love to drive for, and half of the staff had to do double take because they didn't recognize that it was me. It makes it difficult to identify students, teachers, and who's supposed to be there, and in some cases who's not. I feel strongly that these masks add another stressful and necessary task for people of any businesses to pay attention to. If I'm afraid of someone in a bad way, with a weapon intending to cause me or my students harm, with no way to defend myself, so our students, do I wear a cover vest everywhere I go? I've been watching for months to this day. I have not seen a single person that washes or sanitizes their hands every time they touch their mask. This literally renders the mask absolutely useless in the case of touching an infected surface prior to touching your mask. I am not discounting that COVID can be dangerous for specific people, but the protection the mask is supposed to provide should be op optional. If you choose to wear it and feel the protection necessary, do it properly. Don't force it on the rest of us that find it unnecessary. Thomas Sickler, grassroots local standing up to the ever expanding bullshit. Anchorage, with 280,000 people, has had just under 13,000 cases of corona with 60 deaths. That is a 0.47% chance of death, not excluding any reasons in combination with the virus for the death. Matsu has 180,000 people and five deaths with 2372 confirmed cases. That's a 0.21% chance of death. Anchorage has had a mass mandate in place while Matsu is not. Anchorage has done their very best to destroy small businesses, schools, churches, and the financial well-being of its, of its citizens, while Matsu has allowed its citizens to make choices based on what's right for them and their family. You are almost six times more likely to, to test positive Anchorage, and if you do test positive, you are more than 10 times more likely to die from the virus. This doesn't include the deaths by suicide from losing everything, children not being in school, or people not having a social network to eat lunch with and discuss the things going on in their lives. This doesn't include the additional domestic and child abuse taking place in quarantine. This doesn't include the drug and alcohol abuse that's taking place in quarantine. One city is doing what is right to protect their entire population during an outbreak, and the other is doing everything they can to make it worse. Sincerely, Thomas Sigler. Dustin Silva. Good evening, Mayor and Council Member. My name is Dustin Silva. I was born and raised here in Palmer. I left for a bit for college and returned five years ago with my wife. We came back to Palmer because we both wanted to raise our family here. Palmer is truly a special place. I am writing to you all to inform you that I'm in opposition of the proposed emergency ordinance regarding a mass remanding in Palmer. I have three questions for you to answer before you vote on this. One, how are you going to enforce a mass mandate? 
the warrant says you will use all available enforcement options. It would be absolutely be it would absolutely be inappropriate to utilize the great men and women in our police department to enforce this mandate. They have much, much more important business to attend to. Two, do you want the Palmer to turn into Anchorage? What makes Palmer so special is that nothing that it is nothing like Anchorage. This mandate spearheaded by Councilwoman Combs is the first step to Palmer becoming like Anchorage. The mask mandate does not seem to be working there, not to mention the Anchorage Assembly has lost its citizens' trust. Do you think this is going to help your annexation project? Ordinances like this in the future would impact all of those new territories. The citizens that reside in the study areas for annexation are paying attention to what you're doing right now with this ordinance. Nobody wants unnecessary government overreach. This will hurt the annexation project. Palmer businesses have been great with taking the right steps to protecting themselves and their customers. They are doing this on their own, all the while struggling to keep businesses' operations moving in the right direction. This mandatory mass warning ordinance by Council of Women Combs is sending a clear message to businesses and citizens in Palmer that the city of Palmer government does not trust them to make responsible decisions. Don't forget, this government exists because of our great citizens. I admire Council of Combs for doing what she believes in is best for Palmer. All we can hope for our citizens is that our city Council members are doing what they think is best for Palmer. However, this ordinance misses the mark and has only created a division in our town. This ordinance is not what's best interest for Palmer. City Council is not the correct platform to, to advocate for political party's policy on the matter. Governor Devlin Devlin encouraged everyone to wear masks. Notice how he did issue mandate. He wants folks to make the, makes the best decisions on their own without government enforcement. The council must follow the governor's lead. The council must vote against this ordinance. The council must believe in and support citizens and businesses to make the best decisions for themselves and others without government overreach. If for some reason this ordinance passes, I ask citizens and businesses of power to ignore the ordinance and to continue to do the best you can for yourself and for your neighbor on your terms. Respectfully, Justin Silver. Nene Dine Silva. Dear City Council, I would like to swear to the record that my family and I are strongly against this mask mandate. I feel it is unhealthy for the healthy individuals to be breathing through a mask all day. If we can see a new system, that this completion is spread by hand to face contact. And wearing a mask multiplies the likelihood of more hand to face contact. I feel that those that are too afraid to go into the public can utilize all the curbside accommodations and allow the rest of the public to drop and dine freely inside without a mask. We recently walked out of a restaurant that was requiring masks to dine in. How does anyone eat and wear masks? So businesses are losing customers over this. These masks are so unfriendly and it feels to buy us even more. Providing us more. I walked by several people just because I didn't recognize them. This is very sad to me, all because of a virus that has a 99% survival rate. Why are we allowing this to buy us and hurt small businesses in the process? Freedom doesn't require masks. Freedom is a choice that she left to the individual to decide. We need Diana and Silva. Andy Smith. This proposed ordinance with all of its rules, versus regulations, exemptions, and legalities is government overreach mandating how we are to live with no freedom to choose for ourselves. Government can only have power over us if we grant them that power. The excuse cited for the ordinance it is the pandemic, which the so-called scientists and experts have been wrong about from the start. At first, they said they had to flatten the curve, so the lockdown scheme, and flattening the curve changed to eradicating this virus. Eradicating the virus required either the development of a vaccine or achieving, or achieving herd immunity. Thanks to President Trump's Operation Warp Speed, we now have two vaccines with over 90% efficiencies but they have yet been approved for widespread distribution. Isn't it amazing and coincidence that Big Pharma has had these vaccines, vaccines across for months, but they just now came out with them after the election. Herd immunity isn't talked about too much, mainly because the mainstream media ignores it. There are many scientists and experts that believe that masks do little to stop the spread, that 99.7% of people under the age of 70 who contract the virus are asymptomatic or have little or not symptoms. These experts believe, as I do, that the vulnerable need to be protected, that the rest of us need to live our lives in a normal manner for our own mental well-being. The cure cannot be worse than the disease. 
walked down to a miserable barn, turned to suicide, domestic violence, child abuse, drug and alcohol, all alcohol addiction, and depression. This past Monday, it appears, it's likely just a first step to more lockdowns. This is the real goal of the left to shutter businesses with the final nails in the coffins, do away with capitalism and Russian socialism. I, for one, am outraged at this mass mandate proposal on the local level. It would be very decisive for this community. Enough neighbors against one another, protecting the vulnerable, the few, yes. But don't take away the freedoms of all, hugging mandates and restrictions on everyone for the sake of the few. Amy Smith. Susan Smith, hello. This is so invasive and unconstitutional. I have no choice but to respond to this proposal. Me and my house are in absolute disagreement with this. There is so much truth out there, so why this mass wearing thing is not just scientifically verifiable. It is interesting to see that the boxes that these masks come into, they are not factual against coronavirus. This is amazing to me. They have all, that they have all of us thinking that this is going to save us from being sick. There was an interesting study done in which Dr. Fauci was a part of. And this study showed that the Spanish flu virus, along with the wearing of masks out of fear of this virus, gave bacterial pneumonia stronghold in the lungs and caused the majority of the deaths. Again, common sense, we weren't meant to be like this. These masks are quite literally a petri dish for growing the bacteria hanging off of your face. I can't wear a mask at it literally makes it impossible for me to be in oxygen. It's a horrible thing for me personally as I feel like I'm suffocating. Just type in bacteria were the real killers in the 1918 flu pandemic enemy. It is also interesting to have seen a lot of doctors who have been heavily censored by the by the way come out on the steps of the Supreme Court recently doing a presser of the American people saying the same thing about what really works against this virus and that masks don't work. We literally have to dress up in here it make you look like you're working in a biological weapon study that I've been catching us. These doctors said the obvious things that are best offense against all of this is to have a healthy immune, immune system in the first place. And that's done as everyone knows by healthy eating habits, etc. They also came out with therapeutics that were treated to actually work. And it wasn't a vaccine because they were going against big money and big pharma. They were censored. These are just crap talks coming out and saying this. It's amazing how they were all heavily censored. We have to stop and ask why you stand to gain from all of this. This isn't a conspiracy. This is true. All you hear is COVID, COVID, COVID. What happened to all the cases of pneumonia we experience every year and all the flu we experience every year, which has just been just as devastating to our elderly and all the other individuals who have compromised immune systems or problems that make them vulnerable during the cold and flu season. That has Never, that was never important enough for a mask mandate until this time in our recent history. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Sincerely, Susan Smith. Matt Soloy. Do you know my concerns? I do not agree with the mask mandate in the city of Palmer. I am not against wearing a mask, but it is the individual's decision to do so. If an individual business opts to require a mask to enter this, should be their choice as well. I believe suggestions and guidance from the city will be accepted much better than forceful action. A member of the community should make their own decision on how to protect themselves without losing their liberties. I expect the city of Palmer to consider a decision that is not based on fear, but instead based on our, on our everyday values and trust in the community that so many cities seem to be losing. Please read this public record. Thank you. That's all I have. Narnia Savoy. I'm against the mask mandate for the city of Palmer. It is my belief that, the Palm, that Palmer has never been a city that wants to allow our government to control every action of our lives. It is not that I don't believe that COVID is serious. It is more that I believe that the people of Palmer are quite capable of setting boundaries and expectations for themselves. Businesses, owners can create mask requirements on their own premises or no mask requirements without the need for the government to think for them. We do not need to be dictated with the mask mandate. Thank you, Sir Ms. Boyd. Chris Spitzer. To the Council on Interested Parties, if residents would like for everyone around them to be masked and social distancing to be in place, then let them frequent the businesses that require it and go to A and C or stay home. If this administration implements mandates, then it's telling its citizens we know better than you do, and that is a dangerous road to go down. 
please consider the local businesses and for the sake of people's rights, do not implement mandates. Recommendations are appropriate, mandates are not. I assure you, if mandates in place, businesses will suffer. I think that I speak for many when I say I will be taking my business elsewhere to families may implement it. Concerned citizen, your sponsor. Janet and Andrew Stanton. We are sending this email to let you know we are against emergency ordinance number 20-016. The reason is that for the for the people who live, work, and do business in Palmer it is as follows. One, we are very independent and don't need local state or government to tell us how to best take care of our families. Two, we feel that people should be able to choose whether to wear a mask or not depending on their family needs. This should not be determined by a government that doesn't know what is best for individual families. Three, as far as enforcement, if this does pass, don't count on everyone following this mandate, so policing this may be a problem. Sincerely, Janet, and understand. Matt Steele, good afternoon. I implore you to not create a mask mandate for Palmer. I do not live in Palmer, I live in Wasilla, and regularly commute through Palmer and do not want to have to avoid the town. My businesses and individuals that want to enforce it do so, but please do not use government power to create an, another unneeded restriction. As a business owner, I believe that this will discourage people from spending money at Palmer businesses, and I myself will not be spending money in Palmer businesses if this mandate passes. Just like I have not gone up in since the beginning of the mandate. Thank you, Matthew Still, Middle Lakes Aviation. Melissa Steen. I would like to speak in opposition of some emergency ordinance. I'm a business owner and business consultant and have clients throughout the entire state. I've extremely I've been extremely involved in this since day one. The systems that have been put front and center during this pandemic, we are all struggling to keep our doors open. We are struggling to make payroll and keep our employees open to put food on the tables and still try to have enough left to keep our doors open and put food on our own table. There are people out there that see businesses and greedy and enemy, but when you remove small businesses from the from an economy, you will devastate it. This is what is happening. Look around at all the businesses that have been forced to close their doors permanently. As a business owner, I will never mandate to my employees how they handle their health care. I will never mandate my clients how they handle their health care. This is not my job nor my business. If the ordinance is passed, you are in fact trying to put a business owner in this position. You are actually potentially putting that business in a good position of litigation and potential violence. I know that seems like a bold, excessive statement, but it is not. You're telling me as a business owner, I'm responsible for, for removing a person from a location for not following a mandate. Not a law, a mandate that one person believes is more important than our Constitution. How is it that you feel a 60 plus year old business owner needs to confront a 20 something year old and force them to leave a facility? Tensions are high, and this only I feel the fire from getting cracked could in fact create a physical altercation. You are taking certain doctors and certain people and saying that their beliefs and feelings are more important than others within our community. Where does this end? How long are we going to trample on our liberties and the foundation of this country before we say there is nothing left? We will have fear to override laws and riots. These types of tyrannical orders are being overturned and opening up cities, boroughs, and states to litigation. Is this what we want for our town? I've been part of this community for over 20 years. We've always stood together for what was right. I have seen great things from my neighbors, great acts of kindness, and I thank you to come together and show that we're better than this. We are adults, and we have the right to choose what we feel is the correct treatment for our health. No one else is responsible for my health, not the government, not my neighbor, no one. That is my job, and I will fight to keep it my job. <coughs> I will not be told how to handle my health care. It is not your job. We've been told over in order to comply and flatten the curve. A couple weeks, a couple more, it's just an act. Just comply and we can go back to normal. We are eight months in and there's no end in sight. I will not continue to live my life in fear. When my time is up, and I will enjoy my life and family and my friends until the end, this virus will continue to run its course. We cannot stop it in its tracks. If you lock us back down and let us out, it will start all over again. We are prolonging the inevitable, not for one and done, and done with this. I choose to live in the valley because we have the past greater things and choice out there. Let's see. Okay. Well, Letta and Joe Stelick. 
Here he is to propose six to be mandated for wearing masks. One, we don't need the government to tell us what to do. Government and that mandates are only the first step along the way to socialism. Two, most people in this area are fully aware of precautions to avoid contracting COVID and are acting accordingly. Three, businesses should not be mask police to enforce a safety mandate. Four, police officers have more pressing business to take care of than enforcing the use of masks. Five, to recommend the use of masks and keeping social distancing is a much better policy than pronouncing the mandate. We are not a socialist country yet, and we don't want government to make our choices for us. Government has enough to do without getting the <coughs> decisions and lifestyles. We'll let them show us to it. Wanda Sternhagen. Please don't subject everyone to two masks by this mandate. That those who want to wear one do so. If masks really work, that will be enough. The viruses can pass through cloth. If people want to wear them, so be it. Making everyone subject to masks is poor science. Mary Stone. I'm a resident of Palmer and King, and I am against the mask mandate in Palmer. There's no proven that masks are working considering everyone's wearing different types. The only mask that works is the N95 that no one has. If someone wants to wear a mask to make themselves feel more protected, there's nothing wrong with that. A mandate never wants to wear a mask that has no proven benefit in is control, not prevention. Please make my remarks known at the council meeting on November 18th. Thank you for your time, and Mary Stone. Jennifer Sullivan. Do you want make this concern? I do not support a mask mandate for the city of Palmer. We do not have the numbers to support the need for such a mandate, nor does the example we see from Anchorage numbers continue to rise with their strict mandates. Our community is known for that loving downhill deal and has been handling this pandemic well. Our own numbers are reflecting that. Please allow us to continue to be the community we have always been and work through this together without government intervening. This is what is best for the people of Palmer. We need to see friendly, familiar faces to have the freedom to choose. Thank you, Jennifer Soul. Kathy Summers. The proposed ordinance is an overreach by local government. The reported cases within Palmer do not justify this action. Additional hardship will be placed on local businesses that are desperate for customers. Enforcement threats sound like we need towards a police state. This is Palmer, not Anchorage. Overall, we are mindful of each other and want to be safe during this health crisis. Kathy Summers. Thomas Summers. Making masks mandatory is taking away my constitutional rights. Freedom of choice. Masks should be an individual choice. If you don't want to wear one, don't. As a resident of Palmer for over 30 years, I firmly do not agree with the mask mandate. Respect for Thomas Summers. Dawn Sunburn. My name is Dawn Sunburn, and I'm a third generation lesson. I've lived in Palmer since 2000. While I believe wearing a mask can at times be respectful and necessary, trying to force Palmer residents to wear all one is only going to divide us and cause contention. I would appreciate it if you leave the choice to wear a mask in the hands of the individual. individual. Thank you for your time. Go on Sunday. Taylor, it has come to my attention that you'll be voting for a mask mandate for the city of Palmer. I am asking you not to mandate this overreach to our people. The expert excerpt, which below, is from the FDA website. It describes the limitations of the test that's been used since the beginning of this debacle to determine COVID infection and assesses the numbers of cases, upon all of which we're asked to base our compliance with everything from face masks to lockdowns. Asked to watch is people who've been put out of work and businesses forced to shut down, many closed permanently. According to the World Bank, all the restrictions are pushing tens of millions of people to abject poverty. Alaska does not need to drive the table for them in poverty, especially here in the Valley. And there's a picture from the FDA download. You'll notice the test cannot be used reliably to indicate infection. Yet every positive test is labeled the case. Even if you have symptoms, you can't reliably indicate that they're actually from COVID. Can't rule out other infections, and it can't be used to monitor treatment, which again simply means it can't be it can't reliably detect an on-signal model 2019 in COV viral infection. Obviously, it's in essence useless as a diagnostic tool. We've been playing since day one, and I, along with the majority of citizens of Palmer, refuse to be controlled by the likes of those who refuse to see this for what it is and simply choose to further attempt to control those 
have worked for. You work for all of us, not a small percentage who wish to keep this town safe from fully recovering. Mass war wants you to silence women and people of color. Are we really going backwards as a woman? I refuse to be Muslim in silence. Thank you. Bob Taylor. I oppose the imposition of a mask mandate for the city of Palmer. The decision to forcibly require residents and visitors to Palmer to wear masks using all available enforcement options to ensure compliance is offensive and will not result in fewer cases of COVID-19. And it's extreme and isn't as an measure compared to the many other diseases and social ills for which we don't lock up healthy people and close our society. With 97 deaths to 2019 Alaska in total, you know I'm and um, lots of footnotes. And 21,275 total res residents have tested positive. The mortality rate is 0.46% of no cases, less than one half of 1%. But at that rate, but the rate of death for COVID-19 is inflated by including people who die from other health issues but test positive for disease too. Dying of COVID-19 is not the same as dying from COVID-19. With therapeutic treatment and the healthcare capacity that is not overwhelmed, citizens are capable of making their own decisions without threats from the elected representatives. Requiring an upgrade mask in the same breath as allowing cloth polymer Polypropylene, paper, or other face coverings flies in the face of logic. Which is it? Are we all going to die without strict adherence or a piece of paper we know will let you survive? Finally, you are conflating a CDC recommendation to wear a mask into a police state mandate, complete with unspecified enforcement questions, respectfully, Bob Taylor, and then you list two websites and links for a stupid person. Sarah Thomas, hello. My family and I consider Palmer home, but we live outside city limits. We are shopping in Palmer and might be a mass mandate is unnecessary. We are against, we are against a mass mandate because evidence shows that the mass rural residents are doing an effective job of slowing the spread. Evidence, evidence also shows that Anchorage, a city with mass mandates, is not experiencing better outcomes because of the mandate. Our governor has incur encouraged us to remain diligent in hygiene and distancing measures, and I believe Palmer is doing just that. The mask mandate is not much at this time. Thank you, sir. Taylor Florin. Dear council members, I'm writing to express my opposition to the proposed mask mandate for Palmer. My concern is twofold. Firstly, there's simply not enough evidence to support the efficiency of masks against viral respiratory infections. It is a proven fact that virus particles are far too small to be stopped by those masks, especially the cloth more than many people. Where, and in fact, these highly likely, these are highly likely to har harbor harmful bacteria, which then re-enters the body to the eyes, nose, and mouth. There has been a darkening rise of skin and other respiratory infections over the last six months due to mass but obviously not a decrease in COVID cases. And a CDC study conducted in July of 100 individuals hospitalized for COVID, over 70.6% have worn a mask, all or most of the time, more than 3.9% have worn one and one some of the time or never. So I would argue that prolonged mask wearing actually increases one's chance of becoming that zero to six COVID-19. Secondly, as a barista of the person one of the busiest, busiest coffee shops in town, I have conversations with incredible people of Palmer all day long regarding this pandemic. And I can say with confidence that the majority of us do not want COVID-19. The majority of us, of us are not afraid of a virus with a 99% plus recovery rate. And we'll volunteer to do our, our part to protect the vulnerable. However, we've seen as data. We know mask and lockdowns are ineffective at best and detrimental at worst. When you write a mandate that does not even allow for health exemption, it is clear to the people that you do not care about health or science, but about rules, regulations, and compliance. And we do not consent. Mandates are not lost, and I know there are many of us who will not to comply with this to pass. Furthermore, to use fear as a means of control, to overstand your authority in the name of safety, and to call messages to enforce your rules as oppressive and unjust. You are elected to represent this people, not to control your moral and health decisions. I hope you will hear our voices and our concerns on each new consideration. This is the first time you can have a door. Kaylee Tidwell, to whom I'm being concerned. I'm writing in regards to the potential mass mandate in Palmer, Alaska. I'm very close to having a mandate that 
speak to a minority. I'm also seven months pregnant and wearing a mask affects my ability to breathe. I get shorter breath and dizzy when I have to wear one. The poem attempts to make me, everyone wear a mask through a mandate. I will no longer be able to shop there. Then my business will go elsewhere. The great thing we pride ourselves in Alaska is being free. I think the city of Palmer should represent Alaskans to be the respect the last time, so you don't know to shoot whether they will wear the mask or not. But by forcing through mandates such as this is very dictatorship. While I understand the concerns about health risks, there is also a reason not to wear a mask because it also has health risks. I think you need to leave it up to the people of Palmer on whether it's best for them to wear a mask or not. Holly Trueblood, I just want to voice my opinion on, on the mask mandate. I am strongly opposed. Compromised individuals definitely should be wearing a mask and practicing personal distancing. Otherwise, healthy individuals should not be forced to be wearing a mask. The majority of those people, if COVID is contracted, experience very little and less than flu like symptoms and then go on with their lives. Thank you, Paula Shubler. Sarah Tudor. Good evening. I recently heard you're looking at a mask mandate. I am very against a mask mandate. But those who feel led to wear a mask mandate, wear them, and those that feel they don't need to wear them, do not wear them. We are a free country and our city is a free city. We should not be turning to Anchorage and being, and being forced into mandates. Thank you for your time, Sarah Tudor. Jessica, or Jesse Tum Tumbelow. I will not comply with this if it becomes a mandate as I have underlying health issues. I also strongly disagree with the face mask wearing as it does not work. I will not be able to make the meetings to work and I want my voice heard. No on any mask mandates. Do some research on looking to Governor Christy Nolan and how she flawlessly handled, handled COVID. Governor Christy Nolan, the Republican South Dakota, has been the only governor in America that has gotten it right. Not only has she left wearing a mask, wearing a mask up to the individual. She has never shut down her state or even businesses in her state. She even stands at the South Dakota State Capitol every day no matter whether her face over her state. And then walks the halls of the South Dakota State Capitol and prays over every legislature's office and elected official. That God will guide them and help them make the right decisions. South Dakota is in the best shape and condition in the other state or nation. Governor Elam is a true constitutionalist. She's an example and an inspiration to us all. Renee Turner. Palmer City Capital, please do not implement the mask mandate in Palmer. If this, is in, if this is implemented, I will go elsewhere to support businesses where masks are not mandatory and avoid doing businesses in Palmer or other possible. Sincerely, Renee Turner. Michelle Turpin. I oppose the mask mandate in Palmer. Our liberties are still important even during the pandemic. This is a massive overreach by local government. Thank you, Michelle Turpin. endorse peer reviewed research say before any global agenda come into play. If you are interested in that, please click on the peer reviewed journal article, a cluster random trial of cloth masks compared to medical masks and healthcare workers, which is a link to some article. Or see the attached document. For those of you who may prefer the bottom line approach, please quickly read the results and conclusion section of this trial book. Results. The rates of all infection outcomes are highest in the cloth mask arm with a rate of ILI statistically significantly higher in the cloth mask arm. Relative risk RR equals 113.0095% CI 1.692 compared with the medical mask arm. Cloth mask are also had significantly higher rates of ILI compared with the control arm. An analyst by mass views to show ILI RR equals 6.64, 95% CI 1.45 to 
28.65. And laboratory confirmed virus R equals 1.7295% CI 1.01 to 2.94 were significantly higher in the cloth mask group compared with the medical mask group. Penetration of cloth masks by particles was almost 97% and medical mask group 40%. Conclusion. This study is the first RCT of cloth masks and the results caution against the use of cloth masks. This is an important finding to inform occupational health and safety. Moisture retention reuse, reuse of cloth masks and poor filtration may result in increased risk of infection. Further research is needed to inform the widespread use of cloth masks globally. However, as a precautionary measure, cloth masks should not be recommended for HCWS, particularly in high-risk situations, and guidelines need to be updated. Please consider what science demonstrated about mask use before any agent has come to play. Mandating masks in the city of Palmer can only hurt those you have pledged to serve and further strain our city's economic realistic. Thank you for your service. Chair of the Andy. Conrad Vesey, Vesey. Afternoon. About mask mandates, the governor said that there are increasing numbers of first responders and the like that are testing positive recently. These same people are among the 84 plus percent of people who've been wearing masks for several weeks. Ask yourself, why is that? If they have been wearing masks, gloves, and face shields and are getting positive test results, obviously masks and like don't work. If they did, these first responders would be protected and would not have positive tests. Why then would governments require citizens to wear something that does not protect their health but actually makes health worse? According to the CDC, since at least 2005, they have been seeing that masks don't work to prevent the spread of viruses. That's why we never wear masks for the seasonal flu or the common cold, which, by the way, both have a higher mortality rate than COVID 19. I believe, according to the CDC statistics, the flu has a mortality rate of 3.65%. You know that the CDC's own documentation that the mortality rate of COVID-19 is only between 0.02% and 0.04%. If you take out all the deaths without underlying complications, by the definition of COVID-19, it is not even a pandemic, but barely meets requirements for an outbreak. I am not denying that the virus exists, but it is not nearly as bad as we're being told. In contrast, we know from years of scientific research that lockdowns and mask wearing is very bad for health. This includes emotional, physical, mental, and psychological health. Can you tell me what the increase in suicides or attempted suicides has been in 2020? I will tell you. He is much higher since the lockdowns began. That is true for the entire country, especially among our younger people. I would recommend the people who have underlying health conditions, weak immune systems, or are in the higher risk category should take precautions. I urge you to look at the data from the objective point of view. Notice that all across the country, as soon as the mass mandate comes into play, all of the numbers start to spike. I would also urge you to take a different approach and path than Anchorage. The valley doesn't have to follow, follow in the misguided steps. Thank you. John Vieira. To the Palmer City Council, as a consumer within the Palmer City Limits and a business owner, not in City Limits, and am opposed to a mask mandate trying to be forced in our community. Anchorage has been forced to wear masks for months and their positive cases of COVID have skyrocketed over the last few months. Masks have been proven to not be effective in preventing the spread of COVID. COVID. But it also doesn't take a Harvard study to do that. This mask mandate is coming at the worst possible time for our local small businesses. who have suffered through the summer trying to keep their businesses afloat since March. Most of the Massey Valley area, area is not in favor of wearing a mask and being forced to do so while shopping this holiday season is going to push people to shop online rather than supporting our local businesses. This is going to be devastating to the businesses in downtown Palmer and our local economy. Instead of mimicking a failed mandate that Anchorage implemented, you should open our community, support local businesses, and set a new standard in dealing with COVID. We all know the risk. Let us choose what is best for ourselves, our families, and our businesses. Instead of closing our businesses and locking people down, put system in place to help the high risk people in our community. I personally know many people who want to help others during this pandemic, but just need to be told what to do. The proper approach to dealing with COVID is helping those in need, 
those in need of help and letting the rest of us get back to work. 99 plus percent of us will get COVID and get over it within three to seven days and then move on with our lives. The people in the community that want to mask up have every right to do so. And those of us that want to live mask free, life choose to do so at our own risk. Sincerely, Jordan Vera. out a fear and not thinking through the long-term ramifications of the decisions. Our short-sightedness and fear has closed businesses and left people exposed financially. It has left lonely and unstable people isolated. It has quarantined the vulnerable home with their users. It has added unhealthy stress to lives that were barely hanging on to begin with. It has left the next generation sadly undereducated. These are the numbers that concern me. While we strive to keep with the popular narrative and tell ourselves that we are current and caring, we aren't really considering the social harm being perpetuated on our people and the lifelong ramifications that we'll have. I'm an intelligent wife, mom, homeschool educator, and business owner, but I'm not a doctor or scientist. There are, however, 11,975,000 scientists, 34,500 doctors, and even 600. 20,357 concerned citizens so far that have signed the Great Bear and Tina Person. Mark Wakefield. Dear City Council members, it is sad that you would try and push this mask mandate on the people and businesses of the town of Palmer. I know plenty of people that make the drive from Anchorage to the Valley because of their mask mandate. They come out to eat a relaxed meal and shop in our stores because they don't want to wear a mask. The mask mandate in Palmer will drive businesses out of our community and over the still a big lake in Houston. 
Most of our great downtown shops have already ordered for the holiday sales. You mass may account for these sales, don't put an unnecessary financial strain on our local shops. Masks should be a matter of choice. It is our personal freedom to choose what and how to best protect your health. Where will this intrusion stop? Will it soon be illegal to smoke cigarettes in Palmer? They cause sickness and result in deaths. Maybe fast food will be banned. It will be cities of a problem too, causing sickness and death. Alcohol too. Should we close the bars and liquor stores? Where is it that you think our personal freedom of choice stops and now we share approval? As elected officials, we hired you to improve businesses and increase visitors to a lovely little town of Poland. We do not elect you to run the businesses and our wonderful customers out of town and over the cellar. A mask mandate will force businesses out of Palmer and over the cellar. People are already driving from Los Anchorage out to the valley to shop and eat because of the mandates. Let's keep that business in Palmer. Mask wearing should be personal. References do not shut down our foes. Well, Mark Wakefield. Debt left Winky. W A N K E is his last name. Mayor and House members, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address you concerning ordinance number 20 016. I am totally opposed to a mandatory mask mandate as proposed by this ordinance. I won't go into the discussion of whether or not whether or not masks are effective for COVID 19. Most people I see around town, shopping or at other businesses, are actually already wearing masks. The mandatory mask mandate will stop some people, including myself, from shopping and visiting businesses in Palmer. These businesses are already struggling to survive the mandatory mask mandate to hurt them. If I leave my house, wear the mask on, go to a restaurant, take my mask off to eat, what good does a mask mandate make? I already suffer from a medical condition that makes normal breathing difficult. I wear a mask when the Madagascar River runs and so kick in. Many People that are concerned about their health and others are already wearing masks, and those who are not concerned will not wear, wear a mask anyway. Cities around the world have tried mandatory mask mandates without the desired results. Anchorage has tried a mask mandate, and look at the numbers of cases that keep rising. The Palmer's to remain Alaska's best kept secret. Let it remain such without the herd mentality that's currently sweeping in the state and country. No person campaign against any member that votes in favor of urging up upon my personal freedom of choice in the next election. Thank you for allowing this opportunity to address you. I strongly urge you to not doubt Corbin's number 20 16. Our society is firmly in our actions are not the hallmark of healthy and just an Okay, let's Please do not place a mandate that the people of the city of Palmer were masked for the next 60 days. There's this thing you may all have heard about called herd immunity. It's got years of science behind it, whereas the science is very mixed about the efficiency of masks. Masks might help contain the spread of this virus, but they, may not, but they might not. And unless people sanitize their hands every time before they touch their own masks, wearing them for more than about five minutes creates a damp, dark, peachy dish on their own faces that isn't healthy for the weather. Think, please, about how many nannies there have been in cities where, where regardless the virus is spread, face the fact that this is a highly contagious flu. Most of us are going to get it, absent a vaccine. I don't wear a mask. I am a very healthy individual and I've had COVID-19. It wasn't a big deal for me. So if you mandate that I wear a mask, I'll either choose to make your law or whatever it is that you call such a thing, or refuse to go into Palmer. How much of being passed over, especially during the Christmas season, can little Palmer take and still survive? Remind people to be healthy and forego smoking or buying junk food. Please put them to take a healthy habits like walking, but don't put a largely unenforceable rule on your books that will only serve to buy people more. Those who want to wear a mask can, of course, but those who don't want to, want to should not be mandated too, since you can't prove they actually retard the spread of the disease, but you can easily prove that they'll hurt the economy of Palmer. There are wolves and herds of sheep. If you man them, mandate that, we're all so stupid like sheep that we can't decide for ourselves to wear or not wear masks. It will bring out the wolfish side of some of us. Just wear your mask and stay out of my face. Thank you. Can't wait off. Rachel Weaver, please vote against the mask mandate. 
Encouraging people to wear a mask is great. Making it mandatory is a step too far. I'm not against wearing a mask. I'm against being forced to wear a mask. It only adds to more rebellious spirit and animosity when it becomes a mandate. I just don't see the benefit based on the numbers in other states and cities that are going to mask. Please keep on with free code on the section restrictions. Rachel Weaver. Kristen Webb Leet Leetner. Good evening to all. My name is Kristen Webb Leetner, a small business owner in Palmer. I oppose ordinance number 20 016. The precautionary principle is not the correct path to follow. This mandate will irrevocably harm our community and we may, all, may suffer the consequences well into the future. Our community trust, our physical and financial well being, and our city. The one we love so much will be encumbered by litigation for years and years to come. The blanket approach is another path. The one track solution misses all of the other tracks you cannot see. It assumes we are all the same, but in actuality, we're all different. People have different underlying health issues, different ages. Some of us have had COVID, some of us have not. Some need mask work, some do not. If masks are made to be mandatory, so too can other proposed measures. Where do the violations of an individual's right to choose and self govern end? And what number of COVID in incidents or deaths do we put to rest the idea that masks may be meaningful impact? Those who wish to wear masks to protect themselves should. Those who don't, don't. Please pray that we don't become divided over pandemic deaths and survival rate of 94 to 97, or 94 to 997 percent. My prayers go out to the community and for people of Palmer and to those representing us on the council. I love our community. We have the best little town. Please vote no. Sally Wheeland. Never before have we isolated, is, never before have we isolate, isolated, but well. If masks were proven to prevent, I would be for this, but it has, it has not, so I say no. If a person is sick, they should be responsible and stay home. Another note to importance that will become a nightmare to pass. Please note the no vote, Sally Wheeler. John Weasler, Palmer City Council, please do not implement the mask mandate in Palmer. I already started shopping exclusively in locations without mandated masks. If this is implemented, I will go elsewhere to support businesses where masks are not mandatory and avoid doing business in Palmer whenever possible. I'm a combat veteran who served my country to keep our liberties and freedoms. I thought we all enjoyed, but apparently many of our state countries do not care about their freedoms we and want to take them away. I'm very disappointed in this plan to reduce my freedom to see what Sean was with. Renee Wellington. I'm writing in opposition to the proposed emergency ordinance number 20 016, enacting an emergency mask or face covering emergency. Yes, the governor issued an emergency alert due to the video of asking citizens to mask. This was a complete misuse of the emergency alert system, leading to panic and major response. He did not make it mandatory, and it is not law, not a law. This proposed ordinance does not accommodate those with disabilities. This proposed ordinance only allows you to use a face shield to one mask cannot be worn. It does not allow the people to be free of masks or shields with no medical conditions and make it impossible to wear them. I hear too often that those who are able to wear masks or shields are being selfish. The action is those who want to impose masks and shields on those that are unable to wear them due to medical conditions that are being selfish. There are many people with medical conditions, PTSD, and claustrophobia that that masks and shields pose a health risk too. You are asking these individuals to be accommodated through alternative means of providing services such as curbside or delivery. This is not taking into consideration that you are designing food and medicine to them especially if you expect grocery stores to follow this. These other services are not available to provide food and medicine immediately as it, as it is to those who are able to don masks or shields. These people should not have to put their own health at risk because the sponsor of this ordinance says so. Which then leads to practicing medicine without license. You're making medical decisions for people. Dr. Joe Valerius is a co-sponsor to this ordinance. 
medical writers do not prescribe medicine or treatment without first evaluation. This ordinance includes conformity to laws that are practicing medicine without a license for the rest of the council members and malpractice for prescribing a lengthy treatment for all and not doing due diligence to perform an appropriate physical exam and history. Again, people have medical conditions that make masks that make wearing masks or shields a danger to their health and this ordinance does not appropriately accommodate them. The city reserves the right to use all available enforcement options to ensure compliance to the board's proposed ordinance. Exactly what is that supposed to mean? We are asking that an ordinance be passed but there is no clear-cut information on what enforcement means. This leaves a lot to be interpreted. If the assembly agrees to enact this ordinance, it is written that it is irresponsible. It appears to be asking that businesses are to police the compliance and shall require or compel removal of such individuals from the premises. Again, this proposed ordinance is denying food and medicine by asking the grocery stores to move people from their business. Okay. Hi, Whitworth. Former City Council, please do not implement the mask mandate in Palmer. This is actually, if this is actually implemented, my family and I will go elsewhere to support businesses. The masks are not mandatory and avoid new business in Palmer whenever possible. Considering I mean, what would work. Hannah Wilder, do you have any concern? I'm a 30 year old resident of Alaska and I'm vehemently opposed to any mandate for residents to wear masks, face coverings, or anything that inhibits normal respiratory function. This is a clear violation of civil rights and discriminates against those either of both medical and religious exemptions as per Alaska Statute 18.80.200. Furthermore, a mask mandate will continue to add pressure to already suffering local businesses who will be required to enforce this mandate. They will lose businesses due to those who, like myself and my family, will discontinue patron raising businesses who refuse our entry due to non compliance. You will also be opening businesses and employees to personal lawsuits due to the violation of customer civil rights. Masks have not been proven to be an effective means of slowly preventing the spread of a highly survivable virus and is only added to traumatize and already traumatized people. And even if they have been proven to be effective, it's still a violation of civil rights to force people to wear them. We the people from Alaska have a civil right to equal and fair access to any public accommodation without fear of discrimination due to our religious beliefs and our medical conditions. I request that my comments be read to the public record of special meeting on Wednesday, November 18, 2020. Hannah Wilder. Shannon Wilder. I oppose any local or state mandates requiring citizens to wear masks, shields, and or to quarantine. Let the sicker and mean compromise make the choice on their own violation to protect themselves. I have a constitutional right to my freedom of choice in this matter, and I demand it. I say no on the prop on the position of the new mask. I require that this email be read on my behalf of the special city council meeting on Wednesday, November 18, 2020. I also attach your six documents that request to be read in the meeting. Thank you. Shannon Wilder. Okay. Here it is. Here is three pages front back with her attachment. Melissa Wilkins, do not make concern. I would like to make my voice known that I respectfully disagree with the mask mandate being brought up at tonight's meeting. If people would like to wear a mask, then that is their choice, but it shouldn't be forced. I've heard it said that wearing a mask to keep a virus out is equivalent to someone putting out the chain of fence to keep ants out of their property. We don't have any scientific data. They work in protecting people. They work very well in keeping people in fear, virtue signaling, and vision. Also, I believe they provide people with a false sense of security and safety. If someone wants to wear a mask, fine. If not, that should be fine as well. Zero and most of things. Josette Wilcox. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to share my opinion on this matter. Here it is. Perhaps instead of our council taking an authoritarian stance, thus pleasing one group but immediately angry another, the council would be wise to take a more positive approach to the matter. Instead of risking lawsuits, which there will be, and alienating, alienating at least half of your young, uh, at least half of your constituents, why not approach this more from a calmer, centered angle? We are not coming together during tough times. We are Alaskans. 
who don't value government overreach, but do value each other. We are some of the most respectful people on the planet. We are also very sturdy stock who aren't going to back down when we feel threatened. And that's the key to this whole thing. Both sides feel threatened. One because of the fear of the virus, and the other with the fear of losing constitutional rights. And one reason Alaska is famous, minimal government. Here is my suggestion. Use COVID funds to, commish, to commission one of our local artists to create a poster, Deborah Hunt. Commission another poem to create a strong positive message, not preachy or threatening, something like posters like World War II with rosy literature. Next, commission some of our incredibly, incredibly talented seamstress, Taylor Squilters, to make masks that are specifically designed just for Palmer. Silver tip designs can help with that, I'm sure. Then run an incentive program for all businesses, like a discount tax on their water bills if they require masks. Give them that special design one to help people who don't have one. This would financially help help many in our community that are hurting because of COVID. It would appease the pro mask side by giving them the support they need from you. And it would appease the constitutional voices. Even they will agree that businesses have no right to refuse service. So there's no argument. In fact, I think this may be this might heal many wounds that have been inflicted on both sides. Palmer is in a town of Fort Myers or Seattleites. We really don't need families. We need con we are colonists. These families may have had strong differences, but they will thrive as a community, always outweigh always outweigh them. Now it is a time for our council for you to show that you and not only face this virus effectively, but that you can also unify your last Alaskans. Not an easy feat, but you can do it, just at little cost. Jennifer Williams, I am writing to ask you to please refrain from enacting mass pandemic in Homer. I am not against the measures being recommended. In fact, I'm fine on them. However, I feel that making it a mandate is unnecessary and decisive. Many businesses in town are already on mass. This kind of action is not the way to get everyone working together in 2019. A heavy handed mandate is going to make the city council seem like an adversary instead of an ally to so many people. As I said, I'm not opposed to masks and social distancing, but I truly feel that we would all be much better served by a good PR campaign instead of the two inch employees. Corey Williamson, you might be concerned. I would like to voice my opinion that masks or facial coverings should never be required of public settings or mandated by by any local or by any level of government, we should only be worn on voluntary basis. There is no conclusive evidence that cloth masks or face coverings prevent the coronavirus from spreading. However, studies have found that wearing masks or facial coverings can be detrimental to the health of the wearer. And N95 has very limited protection from spreading the coronavirus. For the sake of the citizens who live in Palmer, when you travel into Palmer, I urge you not to invite to be a mandatory mask or a mandate. Sincerely, Corey Williamson. A. Wilson. A mask mandate is ridiculous. Masks do not stop COVID. It is a complete false sense of security. Studies are actually showing that they are harmful. Don't be like other places. Think masks are oppressive and don't work anyway. And then she has a posted uh, additional link to go with her email. Um, Sarah Wilson, to whom my concern. My family and I respectfully ask you to vote against any mandatory mask mandate in Palmer, Alaska. As a family with young kids, we've kept ourselves in smaller circles, been respectful, and worn masks in private places. That said, it is not the purpose of the government to dictate what is healthy and then enforce it on everyone. The truth is that there's plenty of studies that are for and against masks. If we decide masks are right and cases go up, then you inevitably draw the conclusion that you need masks for everyone. If you decide masks are right and cases go down, then you inevitably draw the conclusion that you need masks to keep those cases down. I get there is no way to make some of these masks are unnecessary if you've already made up your mind, and that's fine. However, I found that many people don't realize that there's just as many scientific studies that conclude that masks either make no difference or may even be harmful to work. I hope that you will take those into balanced account with the ones 
But the ones that conclude differently to realize that this is not 100% scientifically agreed upon. Regardless, if mass would live in the states or not, it is not your job to tell us how to live. It is, that is not your position as a governmental official. I've seen the harm of mass. The people looking at people without masks in fear of disdain, thinking they, that they simply don't care or somehow hurt them. They don't take into account my friend who endured rape and is triggered by a mask. They don't take into account my son whose asthma is affected by the mask. He keeps his on as long as possible, but at some point we can hear his breathing change. It doesn't take into account the fact that in science things aren't absolutely for certain. There can be varying opinions. No one should be forced to one side or the other. It doesn't take into account the hard of hearing. The children are who scared to go out because they cannot accurately assess facial recognition or nonverbal communication or the lack of human connection that is mentally affecting our population. I know you might say that within your mandate that it would take into account mental and physical needs that will let them skip the rest. But how does it help them when they are continually having to explain themselves to people who would be to them in the grocery store demanding them that they wear masks? How does it help their mental health? When they feel the disdain and harsh eyes that follow them wherever they go, how does it help them when they feel that they are not able to cope with, or not able to cope when they finally cave to mass in order to avoid conflict and that approaches them? And your point, how does any of this actually help the population on COVID? There is so much more to our lives than COVID. Currently, everything is being decided upon based on one thing COVID. And while we do need to make decisions about COVID, that doesn't mean we should throw everything else. And by and large, we may throw everything else out. We cannot do it. It is not your job to go out and do that. That one was Sarah Wilson. This one is Sierra Wilson. I would like to do some basic math for you. Yes, sorry I'm not asking you to rush. The Mexico is roughly a 3% infection of COVID-19 within the population. As you will notice from our previous numbers, that is lower than the encourage you as a mass penalty. I would like to use the basic math for you as well. I'd like to point out is that Anchorage has a population of 285,634. They also have a mass mandate in place and they have 13,501 cases. That is roughly 5% of their population as COVID-19. Anchorage also has had 60 deaths total. This is for, this gives COVID-19 an official death rate of 0.0002% in Anchorage in proportion to its population. The Manuska Valley has a population population of 800. Yeah, no, 800. It's 88,995. We don't not have a mask mandate in place, and we have. 2,414 cases of COVID-19 and no mask mandate in place. Manuska Valley has had five deaths. This gives us a death rate of 0.00006% in proportion to our population. It seems to me that social distancing is the most effective way to avoid COVID, not a mask mandate. That is the confounding variable in equation. We are further apart here, not mask. Thank you again. Hello, this is my personal opinion on the mask mandate. I do not feel the city has constitutional rights to back this kind of mandate, and I feel that Palmer will lose a lot of business over this mandate like this. I'm a business owner, and I've been told such by many clients that I will lose their business. I also have yet to see truly definitive data stating that masks do prevent the coronavirus. I would like to see the data, the studies, and the laws that can back a mandate like this. Until someone can show me these things, I think this shouldn't be the only reason I think you. Jessica Wingert. To whom am I concerned? I'm writing on behalf of my concerns in regards to Ordinance 20-016. My concern isn't of, them, of masks themselves. My concern is of what evidence is being used to justify what amounts to the deputy mayor telling the citizens of Palmer that we're not responsible enough to make decisions for ourselves. Citing an article written in the Frontiersman on November 13, 2020, it states, there have been 2,224 COVID cases among Matsu residents of those, 626 were from Palmer, and 247 of those remain active. 
in Rocky Mountain. The 2018 Census Bureau states there is 7,306 residents of Palmer. This amounts to a 0.03 percent of the population with an active COVID infection. According to the THSS website, it says that there is 135 adult non-IC beds at Matthew Regional. Of its 64 are still available. It also states that all of 14 IC beds are occupied, but it does not clarify how many, if at all, those are COVID related. And none of this clarifies whether it's specifically residents of Palmer or not. People like myself who've worked in healthcare know IC numbers fluctuate quickly depending on what patients be treating for, i.e., they can be moved to another unit if necessary if they no longer need to be treated in ICU. It's also well known to me that most hospitals run anywhere between 75 and 90 percent capacity on average, not just due to COVID. So, in conclusion, what concerns me is that the mayor does not seem to have seem to base her opinion on this matter on the facts and science, but rather seems she's pushing her own personal opinion and those of her personal Facebook friends and the Facebook group Matsu Moms for Social Justice. She also seems to exclusively advertise this upcoming meeting to those groups and not broadly to the entire city of Palmer so that all citizens have an opportunity to give their opinion on the matter. This does not install any faith in me and that she's here to govern for all and not just the people that voted for her. It is important to remember that the residents of Palmer and the business owners whose company is this welfare do know what's best for themselves, the businesses and the livelihoods. Allow us to make the decisions we need to make on a personal basis. We know what's best for us, not you. That's for us, just for the Frank Winger, to you my main concern, I recently was on a Matt Sudan Facebook page where they posted that Palmer was considering a mask mandate. I want to voice my concern on such a mandate. If we use Anchor as an example, also as a mask mandate, you'll see that a large number of Anchor residents are driving to the valley to do shopping. Places in Wasilla, for example, are packed. Palmer follows suit and issues a mandate. You'll see Palmer resident heading to Wasilla to do their shopping. This, in turn, will have a major effect on the city's Palmer economy. Also, this will drive more people to be in one store, therefore exposing more extremely close contact. What I think would be more helpful for both our city, I live just outside of Palmer, and the people who frequently shop in Palmer, would be to ask that we do mainly pick up orders, ask that we please wear a mask if we cannot be in six feet distance. Issuing mandates only puts a divide in the community we love. I believe it took, a, took I believe that we took the path of educating and not forcing, you would see a more positive outcome. Thank you for being there. Bridget Winter. To Palmer City Council, I am totally against having you put a mask mandate in Palmer. I think that as grown adults, we can figure this out all by ourselves on how to keep safe. Thank you, Bridget. Jason Wirtanin. Wirtanin. To be clear, this is a solid no vote for mass mandating Palmer. Anchorage has 280,000 people who has had just under 13,000 cases of corona with 60 deaths. That's a 0.47% chance of death, not excluding any reason in contribution with the virus for the death. Matsu has 108,000 people and five deaths with 2,372 confirmed cases. That's a 0.21% chance of death. Anchorage has had a mass mandate in place while Matsu is not. Anchorage has done their very best to destroy small businesses, schools, churches, and the financial well-being of its citizens while Matsu has allowed its citizens to make choices based on what's right for them and their family. You are almost six times more likely to, likely to test positive Anchorage. And if you do test positive, you are more than 10 times more likely to die from the virus. This does, doesn't include the deaths by suicide from losing everything, children are not being in school, or people not having a social network to eat lunch with and discuss the things going on in their lives. This doesn't include the additional domestic and child abuse taking place in quarantine. This doesn't include the drug and alcohol abuse taking place in quarantine. One city is doing what's right to protect the entire population reality. 
and the others do not seem to make it worse. Apples to apples, tell me wrong. How are mandates all the new one? She's too much of Daniel Witt the Zach. Dear members of the Palmer's and of the Palmer City Council. My family and I moved to this lovely town nearly a decade ago. We originally resided within city limits, but now live just outside the boundaries, so we cannot vote in elections for city council, even though our address Booth Palmer is our city. We do nearly all of our business and activities within the city, and my kids participate in the sports for Palmer High School. I love Palmer and decided to see the new city council aggressively positioning themselves to act as oppressive of the Lord's bondling themselves after the power hungry Anchorage Council. If this mandatory mass mandate is enacted, I know many will drive the extra few minutes to take a visit to a cellar. They have their bars and their grandmother and their stores and bookstores and our teaching shops and restaurants as well. And they don't have a mass mandate. While I might prefer coming to Palmer for my shopping needs, I would choose to take my business elsewhere for the duration of the mass mandate and impose on the people of the city of Palmer. With Christmas around the corner, I can only foresee such a mandate bringing further hardship to the small businesses of a fair town as people choose to do businesses elsewhere or in other ways that are more than willing to mass mandate coming down from a high from a handful of city council members who think they know more than the people. I ask the council to seriously consider the economic impacts such a dictate would have on our small town at this precarious time of year after an already difficult year following lockdowns and a lack of tourism that had a huge impact on revenues for the year. Allow individual businesses to determine their own mass policies but don't make them responsible for implementing a new and onerous mandate from the city. This entire plan seems to place too much on, this, on private businesses to carry out an unnecessary mandate that ultimately will have little impact on the spread of the virus, but may have a large impact on the bottom line, so many already struggling businesses. We truly care about honor and we pray sincerely down the list. David Witt. To the city council members, I'm speaking up against the proposed mandate for the from Ask Citywide. There are several reasons why, but I will, I will only go into the most obvious reason at this time. You should already know, being on the council, the city's not doing well financially. I believe this this is due for two reasons. One, the total lockdown business earlier this year, and two, the corporate mass policies of corporate and private miners. These policies have caused people to stop buying their goods and have taken their business and tax dollars outside of Palmer. Now we are pr proposing that we drive what little business is still being done in Palmer out of town. This would be devastating to small businesses and the city's budget. I could very well cause many, many businesses to close permanently. With the latest shutdown of city buildings, there will not be normal holiday bazaars at the depot which in turn will not have the people shop in local businesses while already being in town. These people come from all over to these bazaars and it's not just the immediate surrounding areas. Now we are proposing regulations that wouldn't affect the last name of Palmer's financial. Are you, intent are you people intentionally trying to cause pain and suffering to the businesses of our wonderful local town? Shame on you and the left feminist group who you are aligned with for trying to destroy this town. Catherine Wood. Dear City Clerk and Deputy Mayor, COVID-19 has proven to not be as fatal as many of these may out to be, which is easily seen when looking at the CDC website for daily tallies for the actual COVID cases. And then has the CDC data link in here. The likelihood of dying from COVID is 99% and the X quality changes depending on your age. Most who die and who have also tested positive for COVID have died from other diseases, fourth stage cancer, long suffered heart disease, complications from diabetes or Alzheimer's, etc. They did not die from COVID. In Alaska, in 2020, an average of 15 people died of heart disease every week, with a total of 686 heart disease deaths this year, whereas the too deep number of people who died from COVID in Alaska is 99. According to Anchorage Daily News, the COVID only death counts are pretty much lower on the CDC website. 
these numbers do not justify masking all people in Palma. People get the flu, people get colds. This is what these COVID numbers are closer to, yearly flu and colds. Lots of people have caught COVID and recovered. I know three people personally who caught COVID and got over it. There are excellent curative and therapeutic med medicines to help get COVID, and there is also our national immune system. Even if you feel that COVID is ravaging Alaska, asking people in Anchorage didn't work, and it will not work in Palmer either. And then she has listed multiple links. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six links at the end of the page. Additionally, masking children older than two will have psychological, social, and neurological impacts on that entire generation, which will far outweigh any actual benefits of the population. The WHO discourages masking kids under five, referencing not just the impacts, but the overall interest of the child and warns the potential impacts of wearing masks on learning and psychosocial development between the ages of six and eleven. Another link in the email. Children need social contact to develop mentally and physically into functioning adults, and this includes learning and responding to facial cues. Masking children will have long lasting, disastrous consequences that some may not justify, but actual sick people and actual deaths. This needs to stop here now. Fear your fear will remain your people's freedom. You will only be forcing people into an invasion, masking into the material that Catherine would. And then she also resent the same email. And then she's at she's over three minutes. Yeah. yeah. No, but the email is worded the exact same. It was just sent at a different time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one is, and then this is a Lawrence Boy. The top is it says Lawrence, but when he signs it in the very back, seven pages later, it says Larry. I know him. Oh, cool. Same guy. Same guy. He lives up on Lazy Mountain just up the road from me. Yeah. So then he's the next one. Yep. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Here's all his attachments. Good. 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 Testimony of Warren Steve Wood in opposition of Palmer Ordinance 20 016. I am a 66 year resident of Alaska and a 59 year resident of the Palmer area. My wife's family has been here since 1947, my grandparents since 1952, and my father's family since 1954. I have seen Palmer evolve over the years. Ordinance 20-016 is a bad idea, unnecessary and based upon conjuncture. There is no substance, substantive evidence that, that masking and social dis distancing produce any benefit in reducing the, the infection rate of the virus. Further, the ordinance makes some interesting assumptions without citing any authority for this mandate. The, one, the ordinance is based upon the recommendation by the CDC. The recommendation does not imply, require, or demand enforcement. Given the exemptions, this ordinance is nothing more than feel good for progressive politicians who desire to impose their mistaken beliefs and emotions upon the general population. Two, this ordinance does not affect just the citizens of Palmer. The entire surrounding area, including my side of the Magnuska, regularly travels to Palmer for goods and services. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee that I will buy four Palmer's businesses if this ordinance is passed. I doubt that I will be the only one. I am sick and tired of Seth of brain designing idiots using the elected office to pretend that what they do is in the public interest when they are talking about their self importance in the field. Three, the justification for this ordinance is expressed as preservation of health and safety of the community. There is no substantive goal cited for this ordinance other than to blindly state the form mentioned. Again, the justification is a recommendation that lacks credible evidence. Four, there is nothing stated or any study cited in support of the ordinance that would give rise to the belief that the ordinance will produce any benefit other than to state that the CDC recommends masking and social distancing. Five, the ordinance states that the city of Palmer has the authority to not 
and to force such a mandate. I disagree. I cannot find any authority, including that of the government, which calls for anything other than testing by order of a state medical officer or the board quarantine and isolation of those known or suspected of being infected. The state cannot force treatment. Therefore, um, furthermore, excuse me, the enforcement of quarantine and isolation requires court order. Here is a packet of 15 pages of attachments. Take it some pages. Let's see. Let's see. I have those mass mandate in common. This is an infringement of rights. It is not the local government's job to protect the population with illness, especially at the cost of freedoms. The burden of mass is a personal choice, not a collective one. Thank you for listening. Where are you going? Palmer City Council, please read this into the record. Anchorage has had a mask mandate from the beginning in case has still continued to climb. I don't believe that taking the right to be fresh away from people is going to flatten the result of virus. Viruses have always been around and always will be. People need to take personal responsibility for themselves. Eat healthy, take vitamins, supplements, exercise, go to firefighters, and help people. Lose your immune system by exposing it to bacteria in this world. Refresh it. It is not the job of any governmental agency to make it how we live our lives. All masks do is give a false sense of security. But if you want to wear one, by all means do. If you are sick, stay home. If you live in fear, you lose the ability to live and be happy and present. I understand that people have died, and that is very unfortunate. But the number of total deaths in the U.S. is not part of the previous years. Hopefully, the right choice will be made to allow all businesses, owners, and residents the sovereign right to make their own responsible decisions. Any loss of customers will hurt the small businesses on the that already has. I will exercise my right to choose where to spend my money and it won't be power if this orders goes through. Thank you for your time and consideration. Okay. 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 Cynthia Yule, please read please have this letter as a record. There is really no proof that wearing face masks will help the COVID virus. Anchorage already has a face mask mandate and they have by far the highest numbers of positive COVID cases. The CDC said 70% of those who tested positive wore face masks all the time. If you can perform CPR right through a face mask, I really wonder how much good they are doing. We are told to wear a mask, distance, and then to wash our hands. If we follow this, follow this list, we have now put on face masks with dirty hands, so our masks are now contaminated, and we are placing it over our mouth and nose. Fresh air and biting the heat from the sun are necessary for our health. Trust and fear for habits with our immune system. Working with the elderly and wearing a face mask all the time is really long and not allowed. We cannot see your face to see your expressions and read your lips to communicate, so it's very difficult. We feel isolated and angry at times. We need to take precautions. And be careful, but mandating wearing a face mask really the answer, or is it, or is the government overreach playing dictators on us what we can and can't do? This issue has really become very divisive. There are really no solid facts supporting wearing masks to stop COVID. The government does not have the right to mandate the wearing of face masks in hopes that we have to see the old. Dear Mayor DeVries, I am concerned about the use of masks becoming a mandate stadium. I believe that according to the Constitution, we should have the freedom to choose to take the risk of sickness. Of a sickness. I believe forcing us to wear masks is heavily troubling our rights as free individuals. I do not agree with the mask mandate. I feel strongly that forcing us to wear masks is succumbing to the demands of the Democratic Party. Please stand against this agenda respectfully. My name is Carol, do you need a break? <laughs> Always believe one gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> Bethany's uh, was doing her things, and it has come to my attention that mask mandates on the next on the next one of us for Palmer. I strongly encourage you to do the right thing in protecting the citizens. Greetings by not mandating masks. Personal experience. They made my family sicker than having to wear them. To, man to make a mandate and say it's good for everyone is going against the con Constitution and against our personal freedoms. 
everybody's different. And when you take away choice, you're not protecting our freedom. And if masks were efficient, then we'd be seeing a big difference in COVID-19 cases in those areas that were them. If COVID-19 is only hospitalizing 0.01% of the MAPSU community, that is less than even the flu. Many of us have already had COVID-19, and for the majority of us, it is much like the flu. I'm not downplaying that, that there are those who have been extremely affected by this, but there are more people committing suicide, higher incidence of abuse and violence, and a large amount of depression that comes from these strong arm tactics that are much more than the 0.01% of the community. Those that are at a higher risk are taking precautions. Those that are around others that are at higher risk are taking precautions. The general public is taking precautions by washing their hands and staying home and said, I can speak because I also have an autoimmune illness and unfortunately the mask makes me much sicker. I know many others, this is, it, uh, this is the case. You are discriminating against me and many others for wanting to create immunity to wear a mask. The best thing to do for COVID-19 is to eat healthy and be active and enjoy life. Don't live in fear. The side effects of mandating masks and violating the Constitution will cause much greater harm to the community than allowing for choice and sincerely threatening. Joshua Zerlinski. Dear Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and City Council members, thank you for taking the time to read my letter as well as many others, I'm sure. I appreciate your attention in this very important decision you have before you. Let me begin with a brief expert from the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The point that I'd like to draw your attention to is that liberty is an unalienable right given to all living things, and liberty is freedom. In America, we have the freedom of speech, the freedom to choose where we go and how to live our lives. We even have the freedom to order a child that we so choose. This ridiculous false narrative of a pandemic has violated the rights of the entire world on countless levels, being spoon-fed by the public, by Bill Gates, and others funded in the media outlets. I suggest you to take a step back from the Dr. Fauci narrative, who, not, who has not actually treated a COVID-19 patient and why you view this video and post them from front channel, from frontline doctors on their website and other them would be a great starting point. The common cold is a coronavirus, so COVID-19 is really just a strand of the common cold. Please do your own research and stop relying on mainstream media. The decision you have before you to mandate or force mask upon them is not your decision to make. It is a decision for each individual to make for themselves. It is our right. When the government forces its subjects to do things instead of allowing the freedom of choice, it is called dictatorship. Does this administration want to be known as the dictatorship that drove the social wedge between the community members and trampled on all the people's freedom of choice, or the administration that championed for the people instead of for the people? That is the end of the public. Yeah. 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 recommendation on behalf of the city that we urge citizens to mask up and social distance in line of what the governor, governor has stated. So you're moving to table on this 20-016, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wait, sure. Madam Mayor. She, she's moving it with a caveat, though, so do we need to discuss that before we just make a motion to table? No, I'm waiting for her to get so sure that she can get it well, written down. Table, so, so, now, would you get her full? Mm -hmm. Table motion, or Councilwoman Glorious, will you? Okay, okay. Councilwoman Glorious, will you read um, what we were said after you move for table? 
Uh, so I would move to table uh, this this ordinance 20-016 if the council would be willing to issue a recommendation on behalf of the city that we urge citizens to mask up and social distance. Well, I, since you put an if in there, I'm not quite sure you, with that if in there, because it means almost you would have to have the motion uh, to table it first, because you're saying if the council is willing to table, then you would recommend this. So I think you, we need to, you either need to take the if out and make it mandatory, or you need, we need to decide it on two different issues. So, so I said I would move to table uh, this ordinance. Yes, yes, I figured out how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This would be based on the council being willing to issue a recommendation on behalf of the city that we urge citizens to wear masks in public and social distance. Right. See, when you say if, then I took if out that time. Okay. And so you're saying that you're going to table and then urge. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Sorry, did you get that? Madam. Yes. Councilman Best, go ahead. No, I, I have a question of the attorney. Um, that's, that's two actions. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, 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 in my opinion, what has been noticed to the public has been this. Uh, this ordinance is, and that is what we have to pay tax not tonight but there is no if uh, without us noticing and, and allowing uh, that information to go out to the public and then they have comment on us having a resolution or anything else that, that the action that has been uh, submitted to the public has been this resolution Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um, and, and you, should, you, you should all be commended for uh, allowing the public to allow to have all the information uh, presented and considered. Um, there's all the information uh, to ensure that, uh, uh, first of all, I, I want to uh, state that. I'm not the parliamentarian, so I haven't stayed fully current on my tools of order. So I think the motion would be to uh, table or postpone indefinitely. Then a the second aspect of that motion uh, would simply be maybe direction to the administration to follow on with uh, whatever the direction of the council is on doing something further on this. I think what's before you tonight is the ordinance that we heard the public use as testimony on the next the agenda members as well. Thank you. Um, I agree with what Dr. Valerius is saying. Um, I and I I guess I, I understand that um, Councilman Best is saying that's another action, but I would I would envision this more as like one of your proclamations. Um, you know, not something that come before the public to be discussed first. It's just something that we, as a council, support and that you, as a mayor, support. Um, so I, I'm not sure it is an official action because this would be a recommendation, either from administration or from this council, just saying that, that it's something that we believe in because the governor believes in it and because a large amount of the people in opposition believed in it as well as the people for it. So. Um, I, I, I hope that we can find a way to do this. I'm not comfortable really tabling this until we have some sort of idea of what we're going to do moving forward. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with what the attorney and the question that Councilman Best had because the question about issuing um, this recommendation has not been public noticed, and so it's two actions 
and so the, to me the question needs to be divided. So I'm going to rule the motion out of order. And I'm open to um, another motion. Madam Mayor. Yeah, Councilman Harrington. Um, well, if we were going to do a recommendation, I guess I'm looking at the, the state uh, COVID-19 site. Uh -huh. And then to me, the recommendation would be based right off of that. It's practice good hygiene, social distancing, six feet, mask if you can't keep that six feet distance, and get tested if you're sick. That's the four elements that's on the state site. So, I mean, I, I would be comfortable if we wanted to say we recommend all or follow the state guidelines that I just listed. And I guess, Councilman Harrington, my, my decision is the same. I feel that it's two separate items. One right. is that we need to address the ordinance that's on our agenda and which has been noticed, and then we can take up any other matters um, after that time. What is the wishes of the council? No, yeah. Yes. Um, I move to approve for um, the ability to get it onto the table to discuss it. I'm sorry, what? I move to approve the ordinance. Okay. So this is a bringing it forward to talk about. Right. Okay. So why above water or below it? I am the. We are not. Council Harrington. Harrington, that he just muted. Okay. Is there a second to the deputy mayor's um, motion to approve ordinance 20-16? Second. Okay. Councilman Valerius, is that you? Oh, yes, okay, sorry. All righty, so the motion has been moved to be approved. Discussion, questions, amendments by the council. Yes, yeah, Councilman Best, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to thank the, the public for participating and being patient with us as we allowed for all voices to be heard. Um, we heard a, a lot of passionate folks on, on both sides of this. And um, we, we do live in, in a republic, um, and, it's, and it's not always uh, the mob rule, uh, the, the most voices, um, it is, it is uh, we have representative uh, uh, aspects within our council that there, we have constituencies that we support, um, that uh, the most of the business owners uh, were expressed. Um, there, there's lots of concern that is out there I am of the opinion that um, each one of us, each family uh, within our community has to make personal choices um, as to what is best for each family. We do not know the medical needs or emotional needs of, of so many within our community. And um, we've seen this on, on Facebook, we've seen it in the news um, where uh, people are afraid and um, there's uh, so much information going on out there. And we have seen um, a bullying aspect um, within our community um, and, and across, across the state and our country where um, people have a fear of a certain thing and they take it upon themselves to police uh, one another, whether it's their business or not. Um, I personally myself have been uh, yelled at um, due to not wearing a mask. I have heard stories of people that had worn masks and had felt um, that people were looking at them strangely. Uh, and so, I mean, I, I've seen it on, on both, both sides of things. Um, it's concerning 
that we have businesses that are afraid of driving out customers if we, as a city, require them to police their customers. Now, I think it would be unfair for the government of the city to impose this mandate uh, for those businesses to bear the blunt of something like that. Um, it has to the visit um, has been uh, kind of shocking to me to read some of the information that's out there of people making lists as to what businesses are uh, potentially going to be in compliance with this or what businesses currently are requiring and um, from, from both aspects, from people who have heard plenty of uh, uh, testimony where businesses uh, have been, uh, it, or citizens have been expressing that they will not go to businesses if they would be enforcing something that the city would be um, requiring of them. I'm not comfortable with, uh, with this ordinance as a trade. <coughs> Um, I'm not comfortable in this ordinance uh, uh, with many uh, modifications to it. Just the idea of mandating the mask itself is something that I'm not comfortable with. So I will be voting no. And um, I look forward to hearing everybody else's comments. Okay, Council Member Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I too appreciate uh, the testimony from people. Um, it was, it's good to hear uh, on both sides uh, that the things that I appreciate less are, are uh, profanity and threats and, and such, because those don't really have a lot of place in the public process. But in all, the testimony was good. One of, probably one of my main reasons for uh, supporting this was I think this decision falls on each business no matter what. what whether, whether the city is behind it or not. Um, and, and we've heard that argument on both sides. And, and my only uh, thought from businesses that I heard about uh, was concern uh, for their employees and being able to stay open and also, one of my uh, thoughts was that uh, that maybe if this, as a city we stood behind them, that would help support them. So that's really uh, where I was coming from from this. You know, we could, you know, we could basically go back and forth and debate all day about effectiveness and all of those different things. And so I don't know that that um, really is helpful at this point. Uh, the question would be is if we could make some changes to our emergency ordinance uh, at this point. Um, I am in support of supporting the state uh, guidelines definitely, which was um, why I was in favor of this. So thank you. Councilwoman Delarius, uh, with the motion on the floor, uh, you certainly are welcome to make amendments to the ordinance, and then those amendments would be voted up or down, just, you know, like always. So I want to make sure you understood that. Okay. And as well as for any other council people. Yeah. So even though it is an emergency one, I mean, it's handled like always. Uh, yes. Yes. So, Go ahead. Um, yeah, I would like to make an amendment on, um, it's on page six under uh, five. Um, I don't think that the pressure should be, I don't want any of our local businesses to feel. Can you tell, tell us your motion first and then you can? Oh yeah, uh, sure, sure. Um, I would like to change um, 
shall to may when it says businesses and building owners. Now, now you can go ahead and give a justification. Yeah, I, do, I don't want any of our local businesses to feel um, a not that concern about uh, what if a customer gets angry or they don't want to have their employees have to deal with that pressure and feel like there might be, uh, we're going to come after them as a city or anything like that. It's not the intention at all. Um, I also agree um, with Councilwoman Valerius on giving the city support on this takes a bit of that pressure off of the businesses because then they don't feel like, oh, if I have a mask mandate, um, uh, it's not just on the business. We're saying as a city that we support it um, and it puts it on us. So, yeah, but I would say I think that meant that. Okay, now the discussion is on just the amendment to change the shell to bay. And um, Mike, I know Councilman Vest asked um, for your parliamentary procedure uh, opinion. I guess mine is now, um, since the ordinance to be passed as to is required According to our code, either everyone present has to vote for it, or at least 75 percent of our membership, which the clerk had determined earlier was six. Is that true for the amendments also? Um, I don't think so, because I think the the ordinance simply says. It's going to pass the ordinance that requires the, uh, the specific voters, the six person majority. But not, not any amendments or changes to it. Does that require that? I don't believe so. Okay. Okay. Further discussion on the amendment? Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilman Best. Uh, I have a question of the maker of the amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you read all of the five, um, now you are just changing the first shell. There is multiple shells, and then there's also four compelled removal uh, language in there. So, would you like to address that entire paragraph? Uh, in one one minute, or you just want to hit each word one at a time? Um, I'd like to say the whole paragraph. Um, and like uh, changing the, sh the shells to, to many. In the whole paragraph? Yeah. Okay. How many, how many of them are there in there? Madam Mayor, the attorney asked uh, for permission to speak. Oh, you did? Okay, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt on the uh, at the time of this one was that it, it's an emergency mask for face cover and mandate, not a recommendation. <laughs> Mike is a 
are you saying that the amendment then should be removed out of order? Right, so the title you don't feel can be changed? Okay, so then are you saying that I should rule the amendment out of order because it conflicts with the title of the emergency ordinance? Well, I think it's a, a, a good effort um, to our state. I understand what county government is trying to do, so uh, the amendment is going to be withdrawn as well. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Daniel, if you want to make it withdrawn, or you want to leave it on the table? Um, I'd like to leave it on the table. Um, I, I also, uh, so there's Michelle in the first sentence, and then Michelle in the second sentence. Um, I don't think that the line that says, provided, however, that this regulation shall be applied in a manner consistent, um, needs to be changed. So maybe just those first two. So the amendment proposed by Council Member Daniels will be changing in Section 5 of the proposed mandate. The ordinance will be the word shall in the first sentence will be changed to may. And then we will have another. We have two shells that he wanted to change those two shells in that first sentence of Section 5. Okay. So you can, for the people at home that are listening on the media, for section 5 of the ordinance 20-016 the proposed amendment will read businesses and building owners may deny commitments to any individual who fails to comply with this order and may require or compel removal of such individuals from the premises okay. any further Questions, comments, or even an amendment to the amendment? Okay, so now, Clerk, would you remove the um, for the amendment? So, this will be for the proposed amendment for changing the word child today. <coughs> Councilmember Delarius? Yes. Councilmember Steve Carrington? Yes. Councilmember Richard Best? No. Councilmember Julie Burridge? Yes. Deputy Mayor Sabrina Combs? Uh, yes. Mayor Edmund Grace. No. Okay. So now we have the ordinance um, before us as amended. Further amendments, further discussion on the ordinance. Councilman um, Carriage. Yes, Councilman Carriage, go ahead. Um, well, I'm, you know, always one to look to other places for ideas for ordinances, etc. But I can't say that any of you remember being my top ten of places to look for inspiration. Um, so I just I just, I just struggled with the whole idea of an Andrew ordinance and then plopping it down to the polymer height. As we heard a few people mention in the testimony, I don't think that we want to be like anchors. I don't think we want to be in that direction. So I I just, I have trouble with the you know with the ordinance in its entirety. So I'll be very familiar on this one. Okay. Other comments? Or 
Councilwoman Yes, Councilwoman Herbert, go ahead. Uh, thank you. So, well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Councilwoman Sabrina Combs for bringing this ordinance to the council. Uh, whether you like this ordinance or not, three weeks ago, the governor felt like we were in such an emergency situation that he had to send out an emergency alert to every citizen in the state of Alaska. And that frankly scared quite a few people, uh, people who came to Councilwoman Combs and asked her to do something about it. And if we are doing anything in this job, it is listening to our constituents and, and, and what they have to say and following through with it. She may not even believe that we should enact the mask mandate, but she's doing what was asked of her as a council person. And I, and I, I respect that part of it because this is a very, de very decisive issue, extremely political and, that, and sad, <laughs> super sad by uh, these four nights of listening to this testimony, this did not have to be such a politically divisive issue. And I, I see it as a failure of leadership, a failure of leadership from the top, from the federal government to our governor, and quite frankly here to you, Madam Mayor. Uh, well, I, thought, I wouldn't want to do it. I don't want to do it, Mandy. Um, I would like to think that people people are good and that they would do the right thing. But a lot of that a lot of that testimony is me to believe that that's not actually the case. And mm -hmm. even by changing the word from shall to may already that gives people the, the they're not going to do it. And I and it's it's I just it's sad. I, I'm going to vote for this because I feel uh, that we are on the brink of something. Our, our hospital is full. No, our, um, a lot of that testimony in, in three weeks' time didn't age very well. Our numbers are increasing, um, and I, I, I feel like you know the the um, what we could have done maybe three weeks ago is it, probably too late. But I'm still going to vote for this. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, so I was speaking with someone, someone about this, and I, I wanted to share a quote uh, in the conversation we had. They said, character is invisible, and what you do defines your character. Um, in my opinion, if as a council we fail to pass this, and um, someone in our community gets severely ill, or passes away as a result of our inaction, um, it makes me question what kind of message we're sending to our community. Um, so my vote tonight will be on the side of temporary caution so we can all get, their, get through this together safely. Um, I want to thank the public for all the uh, testimony. It's amazing to have so much input and feedback in our community. Um, Lastly, I want to say that regardless of how the vote goes, I urge everyone in the community to stay safe and stay kind to each other. Um, it's our respect and kindness for each other despite sometimes differing opinions. Um, that's one of my favorite things about Homer. Um, so, yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Um, thank you for everyone for sticking with us and listening to all of this testimony. Um, I'm pretty torn on this vote because it's forcing me to choose between what I know in my heart and my brain is the right thing to do, which is masking, and ultimately what I was elected to do, which is represent the will of the people. Um, we hold public hearings to find out what public opinion is, um, not to push agenda as a lot of people have insinuated. 68% uh, of those who testified on this ordinance were not in support of it. And I feel it's our duty to abide by our oath of office and act in best faith of our citizens impartially. So I won't be voting yes on this ordinance tonight. Um, however, it's my hope that those 68% opposed take a moment to think about the 31% of our community who does not feel safe in our own town. Whether or not you agree on their reasoning, their opinions are just as important and deserve to be heard. That's why I brought this forward. 
It's our duty to bring conversations to the table to allow for a platform for our community to voice their concerns, regardless of what side they're on. Bringing forward legislation that was requested by our community members should not be taken lightly, and I hope those in opposition, specifically as council members, consider taking small steps to help their neighbors feel safe, rather than respond with hate and anger, as I have most certainly experienced in the past couple weeks, and some of you have even witnessed in these chambers. There are constructive ways to voice opposition and support, and we've seen that with the majority of this testimony, but I do hope those who have been choosing to be less than civil on this matter take time to try and understand opposing viewpoints and work to be good neighbors to everyone, not just those that share the same political ideology. And I would hope that that starts with the members of this council um, instead of just supporting absolutely uncivil behavior. Thank you. Are there comments from any of the council? Any, any? So, then, Deputy Clerk, if you'll call the roll, then, for, in the motion <coughs> to uh, accept ordinance number, going off, or ordinance yes. number 20 016 as amended. Correct, right here. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any comments? Any comments? Yes. Councilmember Brian Daniels. Yes. Councilmember Steve Carrington. No. Councilmember Richard Best. No. Councilmember Julie Burbick. Yes. Deputy Mayor Sabrina Combs. No. Mayor Edna DeVries. No. Motion is failed. The next item on our agenda is the record of items placed on the table. Is so that an email? So yes, huh? Yes, it is an email. Okay. Council comments. Um, why did I start in the, the room? I think I started on um, the online last time. Councilman Daniels, you have comments? Um, I just wanted to, uh, again, thank everybody for all the input and testimony on this. And, um, I also wanted to uh, send that word out to um, everyone who's been affected by the recent homicide we had. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of like a to that family and uh, everyone involved who's uh, feeling uh, that pain in that community. That's all. Thank you. 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 For following state guidelines for um, COVID mitigation and social distancing and masking and all the things that Councilman Carrington spoke on earlier. Um, well, that would have to be a vote of the council and we will have it on the agenda. Right, so I was asking for it to be brought forward to the agenda. Right, well then our next meeting, I was not addressing. Oh, I mean, I thought you said the administration should draft it. And so what? Uh, so you just say that is uh deputy support. Okay, also Warren Valerius. Okay. So would you understand? Yes, yeah. Go ahead. Yes, I am administration, I am to prepare um, for encouragement to follow the, the four state guidelines. It right? comes forth at our next agenda. Next it's agenda. not something you do by yourself. Yes, ma'am. Bringing it to the council. Yes, ma'am. And, and also, too, when you're done, may I make a comment um, after city council is done? Sure. Council comments. Do you have further comments? I do. Um, thank you for your words about that, about the justice and the community. Um, it's a tragedy in Palmer and um, a horrible thing that a lot of our community members are dealing with this week. And really puts things in perspective. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, I, yeah, I think that's all. Okay. Um, Council uh, Richard Best, Councilman Best. Since I can't see your face, I'll choose you next. Comments? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, you know, I'd like to commend uh, the Council for allowing 
the reading of, of all of the emails, I think, was sort of an important issue uh, to continue that precedent that has been set uh, in reading uh, emails into uh, the record. Um, we often get information uh, and conversations happen uh, outside of council, and it's always important to make sure that that these uh, uh, public comments and the discussions and the debate that we have on subject matters to be open and public. And I appreciate that. Um, I'd just like to say that I, in this time we do need to, you know, move away from fear and look for hope. Uh, in my household, all three of us have COVID. Um, we just got tested earlier this week, a uh, co-worker of my wife. Since before Thanksgiving, we've been hunted down. Now my wife's fairly miserable. My son had a scratch and throat, no fever, I've got a mild fever and so and so knows, but that's I mean it is it is what it is and we're going through it. So everyone has a Merry Christmas. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, again I want to thank everybody for being involved in the process because that's exactly what this is. And uh, on a happy note, I want to thank Mr. Lucy and if it might be Mr. Hansen, we have an outdoor ice rink. That was something that I had asked about uh, at the urging of one of our constituents a couple weeks ago and I didn't realize it happened and I got a yeah, message on Sunday saying thank you about the uh, outdoor ice rink. So I want to thank them for that. I think that that's uh, great. Uh, I hope that everybody uh, stays well. Heed the advice of many of our uh, constituents saying eat well, take by the meat, do all those things and stay hydrated and get outside. <coughs> so uh, I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and a, and a safe uh, December. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to be sure that it's been a long four meetings, and um, I think that there are a couple people that we still need to thank, and that the other people that read all of those emails out loud. And so, uh, Nala, not here tonight, but Kara and uh, Mr. Macy, uh, thank you guys very much for, for taking on that task. Um, it was I know it was not an easy thing, but it was, it was important, and um, and I'm, I'm glad that we did it. And thank you guys. John, do you have a comment? Um, yes, I do, and, and thank you. So, um, I have been a city manager, county uh, county manager, or borough manager for 30, over 35 years now. And what we went through, I think, is a, the darndest thing I've ever seen. Um, we have spent three nights reading every single testimony out loud. We continue that um, and put the time in. Nobody does that. And I think that says an awful lot about city council on listening constituents. And there's still a mistrust in government that our minds are made up in advance and we don't listen. And this, this certainly was not the case. And so I think that says an awful lot of citizens. Also, too, I think. Uh, good portion of those are people who do not actually live in the city of Homer. But yet we listen to those folks because they, they, have, an, they have an impact. So um, one of the things that um, um, we, are, we are really kind of doing positively is we have, um, as of today, we've given, given out um, $2.96 million to our nonprofits and small businesses to help them through. Now, there's some debates you know, going on with other communities, but this is what City Council and City Pump are led with, is getting money out to our, our local businesses. And so we are trying to do that. And just as a reminder for everybody who testified, 
I think, in your mind on one, but I think of those 787, every one of those testimonies were verbally or written expressed their love for City Palmer. Every single one of them. I'm going to have to interrupt you. I need be able to, I was hoping you were going to wrap it up, but you're not. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, I will say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year for everybody. <coughs> we need to Thank you, everybody, for coming on. Thank you for doing the math share that you did here towards the end. It was wonderful seeing close to 80 of you guys all online at the same time. You heard the news that this has been uh, completely stopped. They did not have the vote to get it to pass. Uh, everybody that sent in their emails, wonderful job. If only we could get our borough assembly to do the exact same thing here in the Mount Sioux Valley when it comes to giving testimonies like with the gun range. They didn't bother to read the opposition against it passing. Uh, they decided to just let the minority make the decision. But unlike there, they read every single one. Sixty-eight percent of the emails and testimonies are given one hundred percent against this mandate. The other thirty-two percent go for the mandate. Uh, congratulations to both sides for speaking up and stepping out and doing this activity. Don't forget to like and share this video. I'm sure other people in Alaska would love to hear what happened tonight in Calgary. We would be loving to communicate with us to see my video about liking and uh, making sure that they read their constituents' testimonies, whether they live in the town or not. They need to be starting to read the same thing. They need to be open and, and, and work with, with it. Same thing that we need to be demanding of our state legislators that are in Juneau. They keep telling us that there is overwhelming support for like stealing our PFD. The truth is they have had overwhelming opposition against doing that. That's why they refuse to tell us how many emails and letters have been sent to them in that regard. Unlike the city council here in Palmer, they took the time to do it 100% open and transparent. I congratulate them for that. Thank you all again for tuning in here today. Facebook's Twitter's Audio. If you don't share, go to my website, politicbook.com. Click that donate button. Let everything you put in helps contribute to making sure that I can get a better podcast for you. In fact, the microphone that I've been using here today was thanks to your guys' contributions. It made a world of difference. People could actually hear what was being said versus the last meeting that was held here and them reading emails. You couldn't hear nothing other than me breathing in the background. Thank you all again. Don't forget to share. Have a great night and have a very Merry Christmas. Yeah, I know what I'm going for. Probably one of the